interested in looking at is a um, kind of a novel mechanism of kidney injury in a disease called FSGS. Our hypothesis is that the immune system contributes to kidney injury through a group of uh, molecules called IgM and then complement proteins. And we think that these proteins are, which are designed by nature to really attack bacteria and to fight infections, kind of inappropriately identify the kidney as an enemy and start to attack it. For a long, long time, people have thought that these had nothing to do with disease and were simply trapped in the kidney. And our hypothesis is that they're not just simply trapped there, but it's part of a kind of an inappropriate response of the immune system where the immune system thinks the kidney is a bacteria or is foreign and is trying to eliminate it. It's early days, so you know I, I don't want to pretend that we're close to the clinic. But I do think that there are a couple of aspects that could directly change the way we care for patients in the future. And uh, exactly as you said, when we treat patients with a drug like prednisone, I have to say that, that I've had patients who, who responded beautifully to it, and I've had patients who didn't respond at all to it. And, you know, unfortunately right now we don't know how to predict which patients will respond. And the, the standard approach for a patient with FSGS is to treat with high-dose prednisone, and the dogma is you don't quit until three or four months have elapsed because you just don't know who will respond. And if you quit too early, you might, you might give up on a drug before you've given it a chance. And right now, as you say, we have no way of predicting who will respond and who won't respond. So there are a lot of patients who are treated with four months of high-dose prednisone who get no benefit from it at all. So our hope is that we are going to be able to identify markers in the blood, markers in the urine that will tell us that patients are having this immune response, um, that it's actively contributing to their disease, and that potentially these are the patients who are most likely to benefit from drugs that suppress the immune system. If this is true, you know, what our hypothesis that these immune proteins are contributing to disease then it could also lead down the road to new therapies, things that specifically block this IgM that we think binds the kidney and activates the complement system, uh, another part of the immune system. And maybe we can, rather than treating patients with prednisone and cyclosporin or even cyclophosphamide, these very potent uh, immunosuppressive drugs that shut down the whole immune system, maybe down the road we could develop drugs that really block the specific actors, the specific things that hurt the kidney, and, and leave the rest of the immune, the immune system intact. I do think that right now uh, the technology is getting narrower and narrower, and that the drugs that we use in practice, for the most part, are very, very broadly activating. But there are drugs like uh, rituximab, which is a little bit narrower, say, than a drug like prednisone. Rituximab targets just the B cells, which are the, the cell type that make molecules like IgM. So there are a lot of other B cell functions that rituximab is going to block. Maybe that's good. Maybe that's not good. And as we learn more, I think that we will gain the ability to be even more specific than rituximab so that potentially we could block just the IgM and just the complement system uh, and then leave the other B cell functions intact. In animal models, there are specific uh, drugs in development that, that really block not just IgM, but actually just a few types of IgM. And that's what I really hope uh, we can get towards with FSGS, where uh, we can use a drug like that that is really very, very narrow and blocks just one type of molecule and, and avoids the need for, for steroids and other um, more global immunosuppressive drugs. So uh, uh, I'll tell you what I think, but, but I admit that we don't see a lot of IgM nephropathy, so it's, it's hard to be... Um, definitive about about how these overlap at a kind of a higher up level. The way we define these diseases is probably going to change in the future. So, for example, how do why do we call FSGS FSGS, and why do we call IgM nephropathy IgM nephropathy? The reason we we have these names is that when a, we do a kidney biopsy and we send the tissue to the pathologist, this is what they see in that small piece of kidney. 
And in many ways, these descriptions don't really tell us what is going on in the whole body that has caused this kidney injury. And so, of course, we know that FSGS can be caused by a hundred different uh, systemic conditions, and that's just how it appears. So my personal belief is that as we learn more about these diseases and we learn more about the real specific causes that, um, that injured the kidney, that we're going to redefine them. So rather than FSGS, perhaps we will in the future have a, um, uh, the ability to say IgM and complement are causing this injury. That includes some patients with that FSGS pattern. That includes some patients with this IgM nephropathy pattern. And now we know how to treat those patients based on what's going on in their bodies. Um, but that is a little bit speculative. Yeah, this is something that I've been working on for a number of years, this whole concept of the immune basis of glomerular disease and, and, um, and FSGS in particular. And I think to some degree, the, the hypothesis that we're testing, a lot of people think is interesting, but it's a little bit outside of the mainstream because as I said before, there, there are probably 50 years of um, uh, history where pathologists have seen this IgM deposited in the kidney, seen these complement proteins deposited in the kidney, and really have, have felt that they are not important for the disease pathogenesis. So I think that people are open to this idea, but it is a little bit against the grain in that respect. And I really think that the opportunity to study this and to test it in human samples is, um, is wonderful for me. I hope it you know, leads to important discoveries for the field, but I really appreciate the opportunity from uh, Neptune to um, both to, to get access to these patient samples, and I certainly appreciate the patient's who have been willing to uh, let us study their samples and, and try to make progress in these diseases.